one of three recent projects that uh, express some of what I've just been talking about. If we like, I'll just sort of like what's in one. It's a, it's a really um, convoluted place. First of all, a little bit on the Kiwi Recovery Project up there. Something on T90 um, Tick Management Strategy, T90 Reporters. And something on Customer Fisheries. I, I presented on Customer Fisheries in UC Davis a couple of days ago. More stuff happening there. Here's a map of Waikere Moana, the photo of city and the mountain in the lake was taken at that, there's Tony Kirk, taken at that angle. Here's a peninsula that's been uh, fenced off, created a fence to help the recovery of the Kiwi. The Kiwi Foundation Bird, there's a gun one there. Whitelist, nocturnal, long beak, whiskers, with claws. It's a bit like a chicken, a bit like a brown chicken. It's a, Right TV here, so. Dr. Jamie Apulia, a uh, colleague of mine at uh, I met, oh, I met the link here, uh, which is a Crown owned research institute. We have a point three contract at Lincoln University and it's really good to have them on board. So these predators as well as rats and cats, so it's got a terrible effect on the numbers of humans. So typical, we get an iconic species, it's a national bird and all that, and it's incredibly endangered. Seems to be the way of the world. A shot of the fence, I think that's my cousin Nietzsche there, my older cousin. Tuakana, seen there. They've got to keep them secure, protected from those predators, still they can look after themselves. About one kg. But they're not officially big, but they're, they're a tough food. They just need a bit of a help. Another picture of the, the fence there, and the trap. That one's called a a rat. So the rats will eat the predate on the eggs. Numbers seem to be improving. Um, there's a lot of bush. It's, I think it just requires the maintenance of effort. And you notice with programs when when a program's a success, people go, Oh cool, it's a success, you don't need all that funding. They rely a lot on volunteer labour, you know. Cousins of mine working for free. Now it's cool. Uh, but it brings in questions about capital. You know, so there's actually, I think, human capital that's helping support the project. Financial capital, that comes and goes. That's one of the wormeries here that they have for growing worms to feed the weeds. You know, so there's lots of things going on. And I think it's a success. I think it shows what can be achieved. Uh, I'd love to look at the account book. I mean, I'm a researcher, I can't just take somebody's word for something. I want to see, show me the bottom line, what's the cost, the benefits, who's putting in the free hours, how many hours. Now, I wasn't here this day, it's a long, long story why I wasn't here this day. <laughs> uh, in my voice, Tatiela and Bruno, one of their cousins, uh, he's about to weigh that key. We actually put a band around his leaf and they hook it up and scale it. We got a chance to name at a whānau, so this is at a whānau hui, a reunion, family reunion, it was about three or four years ago. We took the whenua of the two boys uh, up there to bury on our upa, on our burial ground. So you return the whenua uh, to the whenua. Mm -hmm. um, actually the story, the reason I wasn't there that day is because I, I left, and this is down on YouTube, this is so embarrassing, but I left it in a freezer of um, Bridget's cousin, my wife's cousin in Wellington, and we just drove off and I get halfway there and I'm like, oh, it's the whole purpose of the trip. I've left it in Wellington. So I dropped them off there and, and Bridget's cousin was going on holiday and so forth. So I drove all the way through the bush, <laughs> about two or three hours, get to halfway between Rotorua and so forth, picked it up in the freezer there and bought it all the way. And I was just completely exhausted. And everyone else went on there this lovely day looking at the kiwi and naming the kiwi and all that. And there was a lesson in there somewhere, I've just never quite figured out exactly what it was. Because of course the phantom was not meant to be kept with food. Right, so now I've just confessed to uh, the internet there. But you know, you talk to other fathers and you get the placenta after the birth and you've got to return it to your burial ground. No one lives next to their own land, very few people live next to their own land. You stick it in an ice cream container and you stick it in the freezer. It's all you do. It's become a part of the custom and you can't tell your auntie because I'm not a mind, I can't even think of it. I don't know, maybe. Oh, you said you turned it off. Don't you? Oh, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
I'm just making this up. I mean, it's a joke. Um, and so you've got this constant tension between the way you're meant to do things and how you actually end up doing them, just to get through. Yeah, that's why I wasn't there that day. But the point of the slide was they learned so much that day. They wouldn't even know they were learning. Okay, so with all that education, human capital, and social capital, and all that, there's still a strength in these old Tennessee trick networks of cousins, of um, old people and aunties and uncles, and getting them around and just showing them. You know, very few people get to see a kid. They're nocturnal. They're rare. And they're just, you know, and kids listen more to other pe other grown-ups and you know, parents who don't notice them. So look, you know, I can't get them to sit still and sort of make sure that's what they want. They actually even touch on this one. Second project, the systems of 1080 and watercress. Watercress, introduce crop. Here it is here. Um, it's become one of the classic Māori foods. 1080 is being put in bait form, aerial dropping to kill possum. Possum comes from Australia. Yeah, large New Zealand bush. And they just eat, you know, they chew through a squillion tons a year. So everyone wants the possum control. Cost efficient way, trouble is, dropping toxins into the environment, it'll kill dogs, it'll kill deer, it'll kill other birds if they eat them. There's a real concern over it. Particularly in Māori, you know, we are closer to the land. It's still a little rural, and it's still in my time, I, my cousin, my niece, are still just out there in the bush. Data. So do you like data and grass? <coughs> yes, it will be taken up, and fairly rapidly. First day, third Today, peaking at 63 parts per billion, mm -hmm. but rapidly dropping away to something you can't record after 10 days. So, on the one hand, we could say, yes, it's taken up, although uh, they have negative health effects on humans. I think, and this is work by Sean, Dr. Sean Ogilvy, um, and Harold and Miller, you'd be eating a couple of tons. Of it. Most people might like eating where I'm from. It's going to be very difficult to eat a couple of tons of water cream. And you don't eat on a phone, you eat it with meat and stuff. Um, but people are funny. The idea that there's one part per billion annoys people. It's not pure. Um, what they now think, it's been peer reviewed and will be published soon, I think, is that there seems to be 1.5 parts per billion of T80, which is. I don't know if someone knows the same, is it sodium fluxo, sodium or something like that? Google it. Um, it seems to be a naturally occurring substance in watercress. This is going to be controversial. Um, it occurs in 1.5 parts per billion in tea. So it's here, you know. Um, these are levels that do not hurt. But suddenly people know that their watercress has got TNA in it. It's going to go down like a couple of proverbial cold sticks. What they did after their work, they had built up a database, easily accessed online, to help Māori communities assess their own risks. They found peer reviewed material on it, it made it available. You click through to that and you will get a picture of the websites, 